Well, welcome back to Contrastly. My name's Simon Plant, and today I'm going to show you how to fake rim light. Well, welcome back. This is an image on screen that I've completed uh, in the last week, and uh, it's basically a picture of, of an owl, as you can see, in a landscape. Now, the landscape I'd already, at this before shooting the owl, already completed. This is the background. The background is actually uh, made up of this hillside and tree, uh, a separate sky, and the actual foreground here is a different field again. So it's made up of those elements. And uh, on top of that, I've created uh, a f uh, fence and a pole there uh, for a gateway. And then the finished image is what you see in front of me. Okay. So I already knew before going to shoot the owl what I was working with in terms of um, camera height, perspective, etc. It was just down to me to recreate the lighting in the scene, which is predominantly, you know, it is daylight, but it's got a little bit of a rim light to it also. So I went along to uh, the place where I was going to photograph the owl. I set up um, some uh, flash lighting and unfortunately I had an issue with the lighting and it wasn't working properly. And because, you know, working with animals, I didn't have time to really look into it properly of why it wasn't working as I wanted it to. So I decided just to plow on. I was getting the images I needed, uh, but although they weren't quite what um, I anticipated coming away with. So the image I ended up with was basically with the owl, but I didn't have this little bit of rim lighting here, which kind of kind of need, kind of needed just to kind of sell the fake. Just, you'd have a little bit of uh, modelling on the back of the owl here, as you have done on the leaves here. So it was quite important, I felt, to have that in there. So I had to find another solution. And this is one of the good things about learning to use Photoshop. I've been learning Photoshop since 1998. And one of the reasons I've, I've wanted to get good at it is because, you know, I have a lot of these, you know, weird and wonderful ideas. And, you know, to go and photograph them is one thing, but to then palm that off to somebody else to retouch, you're not really uh, ha con containing control of the complete look of the image. It's the same with printing. Back in the day, you could do it and take, go out and take your pictures and then you could explain to a printer exactly how you wanted the image but unfortunately it never would come back exactly how you vision so that's why I learned to print so it's the same thing but the other flip side to that is especially if you're working on location do you, there's nothing ever goes exactly to plan. There's always maybe something that happens that causes an issue. Now, sometimes that issue can be resolved actually while you're on the shoot. Sometimes you may, may well need the skills within Photoshop uh, to know that you can obviously resolve that issue in post-production. And that's why I think Photoshop is a good thing to learn if you're a photographer. It gives you the... Um, the option of problem solving, and that's all we're doing. When you're when you're assigned um, um, an assignment by a client, you're kind of uh, given uh, a problem to solve in a lot of uh, lot of ways. So, this can be a real help, and this is where this technique uh, has helped me on this particular job. Okay, so let's add these lighting effects to the owl. The owl is on its own layer; it's masked out. And what we're going to do, we're going to double click on the layer. And that should bring up our layer style dialog box, okay? So we want to go and add some lighting, as I said. So to do that, we need to go to the inner glow, tick that box, and then click on that layer to bring up the settings here, okay? Um, the blend mode, we want to either color dodge or screen. And we're going to leave it on color dodge for now. I uh, want to make sure the opacity is up at 100%, okay, and already, if you look at the, I don't know if you can see that very well, let me just move this across, as I bring the opacity up, you see, already, there's some lighting effects being added to the edge of our owl, okay, so bring that up to 100%, the next thing we want to do, uh, we're not going to worry about noise for now, we may put a little bit of noise, and we may not, that's an option we can come look at, I tend to add noise to the finished image when I do composites, okay, just to help bind everything together so probably gonna leave that to a zero here we've got our color swatch and so you can set the color of this lighting effect so we're gonna click on that and it brings up a swatch okay 
one thing you can do is to actually uh, pick a colour, which is probably the best way of moving forward. Pick a colour from the sea in the background. So we want to pick up some of this like, warm glow. So we need to pick a colour somewhere around there. Let's just try and take some from the grass area here. Okay. Um, now, if we leave it very, very high we get this very harsh burnt out look so i would bring the color down somewhat we want it to be you know fairly subtle uh about halfway and that gives us a little bit of room to maneuver to make it darker or lighter uh when we add this to the layer so somewhere around there is looking pretty good click okay uh the choke is the has the effect on how far the um the lighting effect that moves into the uh into the owl so we're going to leave that down to about 11 for now the size has a very similar effect but it's a little bit more subtle so choke i would leave on but you want the press size maybe a little bit higher but it depends on each image uh to the effect you're looking for and don't worry at the moment this is this is obviously adding the lighting effect right way around the owl okay and it's coming in quite a way we might not want it to come in that far in fact i'm telling you now we won't but we can when we once we applied this and move it further on we can have much more control over this so it's far better to have maybe a little bit too much i think for now than not enough so you need to play around with those a little bit somewhere around there looks pretty good the next bit is the contour. Um, you can have a play around with the kind of the shape of the lighting effect, and you can cycle through these. Some of them uh, are not uh, any good for this particular image, uh, but I said have a play around. Um, I think for this particular image, that what the either the fourth one here or the last one looks pretty good. Um, but it's down to personal taste and obviously the image. Um, and I think probably the fourth one here we'll go with. Um, you can tip the anti uh, LAs uh, here, and you can also change again some of the uh, effect, the shape of the uh, the lighted effect there. And I'm just going to change the range there to about 60%. Jitter on this particular image is not doing too much, so I'll leave that off. So those are our settings. So I'm going to click OK. So now we have our lighting effect on the uh, on the owl, and you can go back in obviously and readjust these if you want to, if you want a little bit more or less effect. Better to have it slightly too much for this particular uh, way of working. I'm going to show you why in a minute because we're going to go, we're going to actually move this effect onto its own layer next, um, because then we can obviously uh, mask it away. At the moment, we can't really mask the effects away without masking the whole image. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click on the layer style here, and we're going to go down to create layer. Now what this is going to do is add the effect to its own layer, which then means we can start to mask it and manipulate it more. So we click on create layer, and it's going to move that effect up here above as a clipping mask to the image. It's on its own separate layer now. Now, that, now this means, as I said, we can get, add a layer mask to this and start to take away the effect from the areas we don't want it. We can also drop down the opacity, etc. Um, we can also have a look at uh, screen on this. And straight away I can tell that's not going to work as we want it to. So we're going to leave it on color dodge. I'm going to add a layer mask to the image. Okay, in fact, so let's go back a step. Command or Control Z. We're going to hold down the Alter Option key and add a layer mask, and that's going to add a black layer mask, which is going to hide all of our effects. So we can turn this off and back on again. Remember, white reveals, black conceals, and the next part of this is going to be revealing the lighting effect we've applied to the areas of the owl that we want it to go on. Okay, so the final bit of this now is to reveal the lighting. So we're going to get a brush. Make sure it's a soft brush. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to get my pen for this bit as opposed to my mouse. So you want to make sure it's, it's uh, a soft brush and quite small. Now, 
this is the clipping mask so therefore it, whatever we do here is only going to apply to the actual image below and the image below is obviously the uh, the owl selection okay it's been masked out um, so it means that if we paint this layer effect we want to pick white and the white reveals and we'll make sure that the layer mask is, uh, is, is affected so if we paint white now let's go uh, Set our flow to 100%, and I paint over here. Nothing happens. As soon as I hit the owl, okay, it starts to affect it. That's because, as I said, this is the clipping mask. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. So it means we we can don't have to worry too much about being too uh, careful uh, about painting over the background because it's not going to affect it. I'm gonna drop my flow down to around 14 15 percent somewhere like that and now we can look at the image and we can decide well where would this lighting hit now one little t other tip i'll give you when i go and shoot these backgrounds and i know i'm going to put a person in or an owl or something i'll often take a picture a selfie so to speak i'll, I'll often put myself in the frame and take a picture of me in that environment and the reason i do that is because i can rather than guessing i can have a look at that when i get back uh, at the computer and see how that lighting from the scene is affecting me okay and i can see how the, the light quality uh, is on my on my arms and face etc and so it gives me a bit better idea when i come to retouch um the sort of light quality uh, that an object would have in the scene um, I haven't got that picture to hand, unfortunately, but uh, it's not a pretty sight anyway, because it's just a picture of me. But um, it's quite a useful thing to do. So I'm going to take a guess on this, uh, 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 judging from what I've seen of that picture, and know that very unlikely that the, the lighting would probably go all the way around this side of our bird. But it will touch maybe the top and the side. So that's the areas I'm going to paint in. So I'm just going to start laying down we've got white in the foreground here and a brush obviously and the flow is 15 percent and i'm just going to slowly bring some of this in bear in mind if i get too far i can always come back in and uh, and change the foreground to black and it will paint away the effect so i'm just coming in and painting where i feel this lighting would touch rl bit of artistic license needed here And I think somewhere around there would work quite well. Maybe it might touch a little bit around the top here. Okay, so I'm not going to go too far into this, but you'll get the rough idea. So by just building it up slowly, you get a little bit of, um, you know, it's not going to be the same opacity all the way around. We can just build it up organically. I'm going to switch my foreground to black and just paint some of this effect away. From the front of the bird here, we can come in a bit closer. Maybe bit my brush a little bit smaller. So we just want to really just clip the edges of the feathers here. Okay, take it away from the foreground there. Put white in the foreground, so painting again, and just touch some of these. Okay, so you get the idea of, of how this all comes together. So this is on its own layer, as I said, ten, there's before, there's after, and it just helps sell the idea that this bird was actually in the scene as opposed to being plonked in there. Okay, and like I said, it doesn't have to be harsh, you can be very subtle, and if you find that this is a bit too harsh, all you've got to do is come to the opacity here, and we can start to drag this opacity down a little bit like so and it's there's a bit of a sweet spot that you have to find okay but you've got a bit more flexibility being on its own layer so that's how I added this little bit of rim lighting uh, to the scene would it have been better with the original lighting um, quite possibly quite possibly um, but um, you know sometimes as I said when things don't go quite to plan it's good to know a solution that we can use in post-production and this is where uh, one solution has helped me uh, rather than go back and re-photograph the owl or spend longer you know having the owl sat there and people who are giving up their time hanging around I decided to capture the images as they were 
and f and obviously use a solution in post production to create the final picture. Here's a final image. Okay, let me just zoom out. You can see my uh, rim lighting around the edges here. I've had a little bit of flare as well. Just, again, just to help sort of set the scene and um, plant it in there. So uh, that's how to add a little bit of rim lighting to an object which didn't have any. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you've found it of interest and I hope to catch you on the next one. Cheers for watching.